Well, hello guys, here Mr. G with another video. This time we're going to be answering question four from the test that we were doing on a later circuit for the grade 12. This question four is uh, quite interesting and it's not that bad. So let's look at this question. This we remember we're doing the challenge test, okay, on electric circuit. So this question states the EMF and internal resistance of a certain battery were determined experimentally. The experiment used for the experiment is shown in the diagram below and the, um, here is the circuit. Now remember this R here with the arrow is a rheostat. It's a rheostat, which in other words is a variable resistance. It's a resistance that you can change and increase or decrease. The data obtained is shown in the table below. And you have a table in which on one side we... Um, record the current that is coming through this emitter and in the other one we uh, record the potential difference that is coming through this voltmeter there. Okay, that is the only part of the circuit. Question 4.1, define the term EMF of a battery. Okay, and here is the definition. The definition of EMF is the maximum energy that is important. Maximum energy provided by the battery per unit charge passing through it. Guys, this is quite Simple. Remember the definition of potential difference is a work done per unit charge. There is a definition which is also the formula, but in this case is the maximum energy because we're talking about the battery. Quite simple. Using the information in the table above, plot the point uh, and draw the line of best fit on the touch graph sheet. So you have to plot this um, this table, the graph. You have to plot the graph on current versus potential different, okay? So that is the question. Using the information on the table, plot the points on the draw, the line of best bet graph. Now, in this in this question, before we draw, we have to identify quickly the variables there. Now, what is happening? In this, this experiment may be a little bit tricky. We are changing a resistance with the rheostat, but as a result of the resistance, the current is going to change. Resistance is not being taken here in the table. So the resistance is not the variable that is going to be the independent, but in actual fact, it is current. So current is the independent variable there. Because when we change in the resistance, then the current is changing. And as a result of the current changing, the potential energy changing, and therefore this one is the dependent variable. All right, so that is important. Therefore, current is going to be in the x-axis. Current is going to be in the x-axis. And then potential difference is going to be in the y-axis. Now, for this graph, you actually need a graph paper. I don't have a graph paper. So let's make a plan and do it in this square page. So if we are going to do this one here, let's say every two blocks is going to be one just to make it a little bit more accurate and here we're going from a one then it's two then it's three four five and six and guys this one is current in amperes this one is the current in amperes so in the y-axis now we are going to place the potential difference i'm going to go all the way there I try to do it as accurate as you can guys so same story here now we're having uh, from 0, 0,7 to 5.5 so if we count let's say 1 2 3 4 and 5 no no good is too um, too big so in this case we are going to make each block and this one is not going to be too accurate then guys I am really sorry about that. Let's keep that color. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then you know what? Maybe we can make it a little bit smaller, like so. So, and we can make it longer. So let's do that. Let's do that guys together here quickly. So you can see how the graphs are going to be drawn. It could be very tricky to draw graphs. Eh? It could be very tricky. This one is not a graph paper. Graph paper could be even more confusing. So let's fix this one. It's a one, two three four let me see is it one two three four five still not good enough but we're going to 5.5 .5, which is half there so yes it is almost there we just have to move it a little bit there there we go and then we're going to move it to this end so this one is for current okay now let's fix this one let's make it let's make it nice it doesn't look too nice so here we go all the way one line now it looks nice so this one is for current this one is for potential difference, excuse me, in volt. And now we're going to 1, 
two, three, four, and five. And guys, I do recommend you to, when you're doing this work, use a pencil. Use a pencil because you will have to erase it, you will have to rewrite and so on, okay? So here is the access, okay? Now, the table, I'm going to show you the table, but you must stop the video, right? The table because I am going to be looking at the numbers I have in the computer. So here is the numbers we're going to really plot. You stop the video right now, write the numbers so you can try to do the graph yourself. So here we are. So now how to plot this one? We look for point zero for the current, and then let's use another color for that. We have zero for the current here. And then um, when E0 is 5,5, the potential difference. So this is the first point we're looking for. Second point, it is 1 for the current and is 4,3 for the potential difference. Now, 4,3, guys, is just more or less here. Remember, I said we are not going to be working extremely accurate because of the graph paper I don't have. In a graph paper, it's much, um, much accurate. So when you plot this one, here is the point. One for the current, 4,3 for the potential difference. So it is going to be plus minus the. Let's use the same color. There we go. Then we're looking at a two for current, 3,1 for potential difference. So it's two for current and 3,1. So 3,1 is almost there by three with just a little bit slightly up, and then the point will be there. This, guys, is how you plot. All right, and here is the other point there. It is looking good. This is looking good so long, even though it is not accurate. Then it's three for current and 1.9 for potential difference. So it's three for current, 1.9. So we are three for current here. 1.9 is slightly higher, slightly below two. Okay, it is going to be somewhere there. Remember the accuracy. And here is the other point. It is looking very good. And the last one, guys, is 4 for a current and 0 0.7 for potential difference. So we are at 4 for current. Here is 4. And then it's going to be 0 0.7 for potential difference. It's a bit tricky because we don't have accuracy, but this is 0 0.5. 6 and 7, so it's going to be more or less there on that side. There we go. More or less there. And guys, this is the plotting. This is the plotting. Now we are going to finish the graph. Now to finish the graph, remember we have to draw a best fit graph. So it is a straight line. It is a straight line. Let's see if I can do a straight line here, but remember it's quite tricky. For you, it's much easier. So you get your ruler and then you are not going to join the point. You are going to draw a straight line that is going to pass from most of the point. I'm sorry about that last one. There we go. But let me see if I can maybe move it a little bit down. Maybe there. There we go. That would be my graph. That is my graph. It's a straight line. In this case, you can see I have a problem with the accuracy. Some of those points are not properly. But that will be the graph, guys. That is the graph. It's quite, quite, quite simple. So that's it. And then um, I hope you understand how to draw this graph. If we go to the other question. We carry on. They say, using the information on the table, plot the graph. Okay, write down an equation for the terminal potential difference using the values given. So now, what the values given? The values given here, guys. If you look quickly at the graph, we have in the y-axis the potential difference in the, in the um, x-axis we have the current. So we, if we look carefully, we know mathematics. We know mathematics. The gradient is going to be changing y divided by changing x. And if we look, we have in changing potential difference divided by the change in current, guys. And if we do that, change, oh man, change in current. If we do that, we have here that we have potential difference divided by current. That will give you the resistance. And in this case, because all we're doing is calculating the internal resistance. So the gradient of this specific graph will give you the internal resistance there. So if we do this, this M is going to be the 
changing potential difference. We're going to use the very last values there. If you work accurate, it will be right on the dot. It will give you exactly straight line. And then we are going to use 0 uh, minus 4,6. Let's use those two values, the 4,6 and the 0. Remember when you come to the graph, guys, in actual fact, you cannot look um, at any point exactly on the on the plotting but rather on the graph so when you draw the line you're going to look for points that are exactly on the on the cross on the cutting like for instance here it will look accurately it's a little bit tricky for the graph but you're going to look for this line this line here not for the points okay when you're calculating gradient you look the gradients that give you the graph so you're looking for points like this one that is in points where it cut exactly accurately so this point for example will be 2,5 and um, 2,5 is to 2,5 you see points like that but this this point remember the graph is not accurate if you draw an accurate graph you have to use those specific point you cannot use any point there because it won't give you the right gradient so if the graph is accurate i'm looking at the computer obvious when i have the computer I have an accurate uh, done graph and if i do that in the in the graph i have the computer this way accurately point so when you do that you get here that the, the gradient is going to be minus 1,2 ohm and that will be the internal resistance however you cannot have a negative number for internal resistance so the internal resistance is going to be positive 1,2 ohm that is important that is the main purpose of this experiment to get the internal resistance now they say they say write down an equation for terminal potential uh, different the terminal potential difference by term as you can see it there is referring to the external potential difference this one here is the external voltage that terminal potential difference is the voltage so we're looking for a question or a expression that can be uh, in terms of external voltage okay so we're going to go to the emf which is the general one we have is equal to um potential different external plus potential different internal okay we're going to do it like this because we need the equation in which we have um we have in terms of the external potential difference there. So if we rearrange this one in terms of the external potential difference, we have that the external potential difference is equal to EMF minus internal potential difference. So now what we have, we have to substitute what we know here. Okay, so what we have, we have that the V external, we cannot substitute that one, we don't know it. We don't know it because it's changing all the time. You have different values, so we cannot use either of, of them there. So the EMF, which one is the EMF? The EMF is given to you. The EMF is 5,5 and that I know when the current is zero, that is the EMF. EMF is 5,5. 5,5 minus internal resistance, but we don't have the internal resistance. In, instead, we have the formula. Internal resistance or internal potential difference, sorry, internal potential difference is the product of current and internal resistance. We don't know the current because uh, it is different value. We cannot use either, either of them. So V external is equal to 5,5 minus current we don't know the current but we know the internal resistance which is 1,2 so if we change this one and we fix it i am going to erase it you are, i know you're writing and you are looking at me minus uh, 1,2 internal resistance and this is the expression they want to write here guys this is the end of the question i hope it helped it's a very good question it's different because we didn't do a question like this before um, and we're almost done with this test. We still have to do the multiple choice question, which is I'm moving all the way to the multiple choice. Come, 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 Mr. G. Where are we? We are here. We are here. With the multiple choice, we will be looking at this question next time, a very short video for this multiple choice. But you can look at it. You can look at it. It's quite interesting. Thank you for watching. I hope it helped. I'll see you next time. Take notes. Subscribe for the channel. If you didn't thumb up, um, I'll see you next time, Mr. G, here.